Hi everyone, this is Ishika Kesarwani, and I welcome you all to the Tech Podcast. Today we are having Prati Kumar Singh. He is a site reliability and a DevOps engineer. Can you first start with your introduction? Uh, hello everyone, uh, I am Prati Singh. I have uh, been a college student for past three years now. I am hoping to graduate next year as soon as possible. Can't wait for it. and uh, currently i am learning uh, devops i am learning different tech stacks and tools in this domain and uh, yes i am uh, looking out for opportunities and i have done past internships i have some experience and i am here to help out uh, all the listeners and all the students that i can reach out to okay so i see that you've been a part of a lot of communities for a while now so how did you get to know about such opportunities and what all things that you have learned to it okay so uh, ishka that i always feel this that uh, a developer or a coder should not be alone left alone although our job criteria is kind of that that you can you know sit idly on some beach and do it from your laptop but it should not be like that because uh, a community the connection with people there is a massive amount of passive learning that occurs so if you are in a community if you are working with your uh, you know friends or your colleagues in an office you not only learn in your domain you learn a lot about other domains as well like i have learned a lot about machine learning or blockchain because of my friends or peers with whom i have participated in hackathons coming to how did i got to know about uh, you know communities uh, well it was <laughs> because of the lockdown i would say because uh, when lockdown came in we got a, a plenty amount of time at that time uh, uh, it was 2020 i guess and i got involved at gdsc nsut i guess some delhi college i got involved and then i got to know that okay there are tech committees known as these that are you know helping out students and they share they shared resources and everything so i thought that okay this is this is a brilliant thing that should happen on my campus as well so that's how i got started involved in communities and uh, luckily enough i have been part of three to four communities in my campus as well and i am very fortunate enough to be leading one Okay so according to you you know from a fresher's point of view if a student in first year wants to join a community uh, what would you suggest them like how can they look up for communities and be a part of it so yeah for first year students communities is a you know very big thing because it's not only tech communities that comes to mind there are different you know dance communities uh, singing Uh, theater etc and as i see it engineering first year should be a time for exploration not only in tech domain but other domains as well so i encourage all the first students that i interact with that you know go and explore as much as possible because you know second third year and moving forward you will be just getting more and more burdened with not only college assignments but yeah future perspective as well so first year you should try and uh, explore as much as possible Uh, joining communities i would suggest that first try to join in college communities if your college exists huh? because that's a great place to start you'll have your seniors like personally i'm saying i have learned a lot from my college seniors uh, like i would not be 10% of a developer what i am today if it was not for my college seniors so i would first suggest that you know try to break or create some college communities if uh, there is a possibility if that's the case that you know your college is such a place that you are not able to find such seniors you are not able to find such peers you always have the internet you can join many uh, great communities that exist out there on the internet there are discord servers uh, you know edi hub comes to mind uh, like i am a great fan of edi and i have communicated with him over a time so uh, he that's a very good place for students to start with there are different communities like this is your is your community is there i have been coming back and forth to these events as well I have learned a lot from Vivek sir. So yeah, uh, although this is a secondary, uh, you know, second option that students should have and eventually land up to. But first, we should always start with the college level itself. Yeah, and like one more thing which I personally feel is a really good thing for students is that you know being part of open source projects because over there you'll be working with you know good people and like people with a lot of knowledge and you'll be working on so many new things and they'll be guiding you throughout. So uh, one more thing that I would li- like to add on into this is this. Okay, so also like I've seen that you've been interning in so many companies in different roles. What really you know motivated you to do all this, and how did you get to know about these opportunities? Like how did you you know get in? Because it's not very easy for a student to get an internship. Uh, yeah, correct. So that is a big uh, hurdle that is there. 
so uh, my journey started as i started my engineering uh, like that is one of my regrets that i have not you know as i say is i not explored much in my first year so i started with what everyone does so i was doing competitive programming i was doing bsc and c++ so suddenly like uh, because i'm uh, i'm a student of a college in bangalore so bangalore has this uh, you know immense amount of hackathons or meetups that are happening now also it used to happen before the lockdown also so i got to know about these hackathons that okay there is some competition where you go and they provide you free food and you know you can stay overnight and you get swags and all so for first years i was very much excited that okay let's go but uh, evidently enough what happened that uh, because i only did cp and you know competitive programming and dsa i just had basic knowledge of c++ no one was accepting me as a you know applicant that was an ego <laughs> to be very true uh, that was the time that i realized that okay pratik this is not going to be enough you have to do more so yeah that uh, that's where the exploration part for me uh, uh, to be very true started and i started to look into different things that okay what all should i learn uh, starting with web development i always say that you know web development is a very good place to start you don't need a very high end laptop or you know you don't need very big courses learning html css is not a big deal and then you eventually move up to the ladder so yeah one after the other i started you know i completed web development i started to okay now what so it was cloud so i you know explored cloud i did some work in that then i eventually landed up over at devops and uh, finding internships is difficult that is very true but uh, i would suggest that if you have the right skill set you have your right resume and you keep on trying that last part is very important people don't try enough that i have seen if you keep on trying there are you know companies that are looking for developers such as you and they will hire you yeah and that's really good and like you've been working on devops right so yeah. like again being a student <laughs> what really motivated you to you know focus on this rather than the course curriculum and the courses that you get in the college How did you, you know? How did you prioritize time, basically, uh, to learn this? Actually, this is actually not uh, a very perfect answer that I would be giving on because uh, I come from an EC background, electronics and communication engineering. So pretty much when I, uh, you know, I hustled through my first year, it was very evident to me that I don't want to, you know, pursue as a career in this. So a bare minimum, just uh, not only passing grade, I get much more grades than passing. But that was the thing that I have. So, you know i have prioritized my you know focus that okay this is not a thing that i have to focus on on a daily basis so that is reserved for the days that okay exams are coming up i'll study now coming to like how i got interested in devops and all uh, as i was telling that i started very early so because i have done competitive programming i know how much uh, you know uh, there is importance of an efficiency of a code i knew that then i started web development over there i got to know that uh, you know how that code is important like uh, not only efficient it should actually be useful or not like even if it, i write a dp program and it's not you know compatible with the apis it's of no use so uh, that happened and then when i started to devops one thing that majorly clicks with me is that uh, devops is a very bigger picture game that you are able to see every application that how it's going what's going on while i was working at my you know different uh, my last internships i got to know the exact figure that how the company is working and that is a very fascinating thing that if anything goes down you are the person who knows that why is it going down and that is the thing that is very fun to do as a job that you know the company is relying on you that okay if the product is online you have to be there if anything goes down you are the like kind of a superhero i would say maybe an extent but yeah yeah Also, like I have seen that you're also a GitHub extern. So, like, how's your experience been working with that? And like, what all did you, you know, get to learn being a part of this? Okay, uh, GitHub externship surely was a very great opportunity that, uh, luckily enough, I got in. Uh, I have learned a lot about uh, Kubernetes over there because we were making some. Uh, Uh, APIs on top of Kubernetes, so I learned that a lot. And obviously, the project I was involved with was Litmus Kiosk, so that is all about kiosk engineering. So the good thing that happened with me was that during my last uh, last internship at Jaspay, I uh, you know I had learned how to build Kubernetes and you know how to maintain stuff on Kubernetes. Over at kiosk engineering, I got the flavor to how to break things, and <laughs> that was a very good contrast, I would say. and uh, i learned a lot of golang over there because my work primarily was on golang 
so uh, that was a good uh, you know ch- change of pace i would say and yeah it was a very good experience overall yeah like you've been working in so many technologies right so how do you manage it all like how can you just pick up some technology and just learn it like it takes yeah, time right. so how do you do it how do you start with it yeah correct uh, that is a thing so uh in engineering i have seen as a whole uh, whether you are whatever kind of you know branch you are opting or whatever you are doing engineering teaches one common skill to every one of us that if there is a skill out there even if i don't know i don't care i will go learn it and implement it that confidence is built over in engineering and if that is not happening with you i believe that you are not doing engineering correctly that you know even if i have to organize an event i don't have any clue how to organize an event but if you know uh, when the time comes and if i have to do it i will do it so that skill is there so that is a feeling that i feel and yeah how do i learn new technologies that's actually a great question and it's not a very accurate answer to be very honest no one no one in the whole industry will give you a perfect answer for you you know it's a very subjective question that uh, how it relates to you how the content relates to you for me i would say that i like the content of free code camp i am a person who loves to write uh, you know read articles i am not very much great fan of youtube videos so it's a very subjective answer uh, my uh, you know my in uh, general suggestion would be learn on the go whatever you are doing start doing it and learn according to that okay that i have to build xyz thing break it into smaller parts and then try to solve one part at a time so that helps Yes, very well said. I mean, it really makes the whole process much easier rather than you know looking up the whole, looking at the whole image. You should just start from one step and another. Okay, yeah, correct. <laughs> it's like a computer game. You don't. Uh, you just go and fight the final boss. You start with the easier yeah. levels and then you move up the ladder. Yeah, and then gradually you just you know increase your whole skill set. That's the thing. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you planning to learn next now? <laughs> uh currently i am uh, becoming more proficient in golang like uh, uh, any language that i see has very much depth in it although i have been working in golang for past 10 uh, 10 months now but still i feel that there are some things that i am lagging so uh, currently i am doing that other than that my next step i would be uh, orienting my profile much towards you know kubernetes and devops space because i am very much interested in uh, trying to get a job into that so most probably i'll be doing some certifications or maybe another internship where i get the opportunity to do that yeah damn you've been doing so much being a student and you're just in third year right like or you yeah. just new third year uh my third year semester ends are going to be happening next month so okay can't best of luck with that <laughs> and yeah, like uh would you like to share some tips from your end that you have learned throughout your journey till now that you would like to you know tell the listeners about okay so basically i would uh, just give two tips that uh, usually i give to all the friends or you know who ever ask me about how to succeed in this domain so first thing uh, i believe i firmly believe is that uh, you should not quit at any moment uh, life will give you many hard times will give you situations where you know there will be like there is no tomorrow or that, like there is no hope for this now moving forward i have been in situations where i was in a 3 day hackathon and the last day my laptop crashed yet somehow we you know figure it out we improvise and we do the work so very uh, crazy things happens in this domain so be ready for that and uh, like quitting it out is not an option worst comes to worst whatever you feel that this failure is very big enough and you cannot you not know, turn around it it's not true i'm i'm assuring you it's not true I have seen very big failures in my life till now, and it's not true at all. If you have any any doubts on it, go check my Twitter. You'll find it out. I have a lot of failures in life. Uh, moving ahead, the second option that I always uh, you know uh, see is uh, people always ask me that you know Pratik, uh, how do you manage to do these things X Y Z? So uh, I'm I'm applying for a job and I'm not getting a job, or I'm applying for an internship and I'm not getting this internship. Uh, i'm applying for the hackathon i'm not winning a hackathon uh, the true fact that i am able to do this is and i have seen most of the players in this industry do is that we are not constant on one thing that's a very big uh, myth that students have that i'll just focus on one thing at a time and you know i will be very good at it 
you have to learn to create a balance among multiple things like a computer works on multiple threads correct a computer is a very efficient machine and it works on multiple threads and if the a single thread was the best option people would be doing that in a computer as well so uh, that's what i do uh, i have multiple threads open at the same time i already have a offer letter from some company still i am applying for other i have an interview tomorrow uh, i am still giving a test today so i i am running on multiple threads so even if you know one of the thread fails i'm not at a loss i still have my other backups uh, i had a recently i had a very big failure currently uh, professionally i had a very big uh, setback but what happened luckily enough because my other uh, you know threads were running parallelly the next day itself i got an interview for a, one of my dream companies and so this is a law of average kind of situation that you try on multiple things and you don't get your expectations high for everyone no don't do that rejection is as common as the air we breathe in this industry so don't be afraid of rejections keep on trying keep on applying yeah like exactly if it's meant to be it will be if you're not able to get something right now maybe there's something better coming up for you true very right? true and like people usually learn from you know people's experiences and their mistake and their achievements and i really hope that the listeners were able to learn something from this podcast uh, with that I, I note so. <laughs> yeah that note we can wrap up today's session thank you so much pratik for taking out your time and coming up thank here you, and you, sharing thank you thank you thank you for giving me the stage i hope i help someone and yeah i'm always available on twitter linkedin whichever you uh, prefer i'm here to help you out okay thank you um with that we are at the end of the session and make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we'll be coming up with many more videos like this thank you bye bye